Hello folks, where the question of gold making comes up, the add-on trade skill master always gets discussed. For some, it's seen as an essential tool that no gold maker can do without, but for some, it's the cause of all auction house ills and should be banned. Those of you who know how the internet works will realise that, as always, the truth is somewhere in between. TSM is a very powerful add-on that does make it easier to interact with the auction house and also honestly in other areas like crafting mail and vendors and it primarily does that by providing better user interfaces and tool sets. It does make it a lot easier to post large numbers of items to the auction house but it really doesn't automate the process of making gold. If you want to optimize your gold making to the max, you still have to figure out what prices to sell things at, how to time things in the market and what and what not to craft and post and all that good stuff. What this does mean is that TSM has a reputation for being very complex to set up and use. Now in reality, TSM certainly can be complex to set up if you want to use it to min-max your gold making. But once you've done that setup, it's really easy to use. In addition, TSM does come with a default setup, which is actually perfectly good for performing basic auction house operations like just posting everything in your bags. Now, while it does make that very easy, one of the problems is it can make it too easy. And if you use the default setup, you'll very quickly find yourself selling stuff that you don't mean to set. And that does mean that these default settings aren't perfect. In this video, I'm going to take you through the basics of getting TSM up and running and then how to set it up to avoid those kind of issues. Now, I'm not going to just share a setup, but I'm going to go through and explain how I've done it so that you'll hopefully be well equipped to expand on and modify your settings to better meet your specific needs, especially as you scale up your gold making. This setup is aimed at two primary audiences. One audience is the people who just want to an easier way to interact with the auction house and aren't really specifically targeting gold making and the other is for casual entry level gold making. This will help you to post your auctions more efficiently, saving you time and effort while making sure that you don't leave gold lying on the floor. It's not going to make you millions of month. For that, you'll still have to put the time into gathering or crafting, but it will make sure that you maximize your gold no matter what your playstyle is. Anyway, enough of all that waffle. Let's get started with installing TSM. The key value add to TSM is the rich set of market data it collects and presents to you in the add-on. Many auction house add-ons do this by scanning the entire auction house, a process that can take an annoying amount of time. TSM instead does this by using a desktop application to download pre-built data, removing the need for those long waits. You can install the base add-on from sources like CurseForge, but without the desktop app, its capabilities are severely limited. For this reason, it's best to get started by visiting the TSM website. I'll put a link in the description down below and on screen. And from there, you can directly download the TSM add-on. At the same time, you will want to set up an account on the TSM website. Before starting the app, you'll want to go into this realm selection option on the website and configure the realms in which you have characters. This setup will be automatically picked up out of the app when you start it up, meaning it will be fully ready to go right from the start. The next step is to install the app and you just use the installer that you downloaded. Once installed, the app will ask for your login. That's the account that you set up in the TSM website and then it will start downloading the auction house data that you configured in the last step. The last thing you need to do is to go to the add-on versions tab in TSM and hit this text that says to double click and that will install the TSM add-on for you. Now there's actually two add-ons, TSM itself and an app helper that helps to get that auction house data you're downloaded into the add-on and into the game. And that's it. Load up the game and TSM is now ready to use. To call it up, you simply head over to the auction house and you'll find that the auction house UI is now replaced with TSM's UI. You'll also find that its user interface will pop up elsewhere. For example, you'll see it pop up when you access your mailbox, vendors and also the crafting UI. Now, if you don't want TSM's version for any of these, you can just hit the button at the top to switch back to the standard UI. Now, as I said, the default setup is perfectly okay for basic auction house posting, but it does require you to pay attention to what prices it's posting. That's fine for the small number of items, but TSM's real power is in the way that it can clear out your bags for you. 
That's including the stuff that you really didn't want to sell. And if you use the default setup, I can guarantee you, you will end up selling stuff that you didn't want to sell. Fortunately, with a little bit of effort, and this can be avoided, as TSM allows you to set up rules about what you sell, how you sell it, and even what not to sell. To manage all of this, TSM has two major concepts that you want to understand, groups and operations. Now, groups are very simple. It's simply a collection of items. TSM allows you to create multiple groups and add different items to different groups. There's also some useful tools to share groups, but honestly, I've always been quite happy to just manually add new items that I get into my groups as I need them. Operations are a set of rules that tell TSM how to price your items and even if or if not, you want to sell them. When getting started, I recommend at first having three basic groups. One for consumable items like potions and trade maps, one for gear and similar durable stuff that players only buy once, and a third group which is the stuff that you don't want to sell. Now, I actually have two groups for that third category. I have one which I call raid maps, which is basically current content consumables that are used all the time, and goodies, which is items that I will never ever want to sell. When I get a new item that's ungrouped, TSM shows it in its main window, and you can access that from a mini map button or just by typing slash TSM. And from there, you can allocate it to a group. Now let's look at how I set up those groups. I'll start with the two easy ones, which are raid mats and goodies. The only difference with these groups is that raid maps are used for stuff that I don't want to sell in the current expansion, but I will want in future. At the end of an expansion, I basically just remove everything from this group and then reallocate it to be sold from one of the other groups. Whereas for the goodies category, that's the stuff that I know I never ever will want to sell. Basically anything that I add to that is just a fire and forget deal. To prevent items in these groups from being sold, it's really easy. Just go into the group setup, hit the operations tab, hit override parent operation, and then delete all the operations. This will basically tell TSM to effectively ignore these items. They won't even show up if you do an auction house scan. Now let's move on to setting up to a group for real. And I'm going to start with the durables group. Now the durables group isn't limited to gear. It's also has stuff like bags and recipes. Basically anything that a player would normally only ever want to buy one of. These items are a lot slower to sell, often cost more, and are mostly sold only in your current realm. Now, I'll come back to the current realm thing in a minute if you're not sure what I mean by that. For this group, I'm also going to remove the default operation by setting the override on, and then I'm going to set up a new operation, which I'm going to call durables. So let's click through and go into the operation setup itself. Now, the meat of this setup is in the posting tab, I pretty much never other touch the other two tabs. I set the duration to 48 hours as durable items are slower to sell and it's worth maximizing their post time. And I set the cap to one. Flooding the auction house with multiples of items like this generally isn't that helpful for beginner posting. I also set this option to no post after 15 expires. The logic behind this is that if I'm checking expired auctions daily, the item will be listed for a month. And if it's not sold in that time, it may never sell. And I'm probably going to be wasting a lot of auction house deposits. Now, obviously for hardcore transmog or pet sellers, that's not strictly true. But going over 15, you probably at least want to check manually that the item is worth pre-posting. For the posting price, and I'm going to set a bid price of 95% of buyout. What that basically means is that when TSM decides what amount to sell it for, it'll put a 5% discount on it and offer that as a bid. And then I set the undercut to one silver. Now, for non-commodity items, each auction house listing is presented to the player in a list, meaning that you have a better chance of selling the item if you're lower than your competition. TSM's approach to pricing is to find the current lowest price and then undercut it a little. Most of the rest of the settings I'm going to go through here is about how we set up some guardrails around that behavior to try and make it a little bit safer. And so let's move on to the minimum price. This is where you can protect yourself against what I would call auction house PVP. Sometimes people will post a single item at a very low price 
to try to bait sellers using TSM into listing their items under value so they can then buy them up cheap and flip them at a higher price. You also get a lot of clowns that post items at below the vendor price. And that's what this particular configuration that I'm going to present here is designed to avoid. Now this configuration is a little bit complex to read, so let's break it down. This bit here, 106% vendor sell, is basically the vendor price plus the 5% auction house cut plus a 1% margin. The 1% margin is because there's no point posting an item for the same amount as you get from a vendor after you take the auction house cut into account. Vendor sell is one of TSM's built-in pricing data strings that we get from the TSM app. What it is, is it's the amount that you can sell that item to a vendor for. The first function tells TSM to pick the first valid value it finds. What it's doing in this case is saying that if there's no vendor price, it's going to fall back to using two silver instead. Now, DB market is essentially the market price for the item in your realm calculated using sale data from the last 14 days. DB region market average is the average of the market prices across all of the realms in your region. 40% DB market basically says that we don't want to list an item for less than 40% of that 14 day market price. But why am I also using DB market average? Well, if an item is very rare, it may not have shown up in your region's auction house for the last 14 days, in which case DB market won't have a value. And in that case, what I want to do is to fall back to the region-wide average, which should hopefully have some data from other realms. Now, the regional price may not be super accurate for your realm, so you don't want to use it every time. Hence, I'm preferring your realm's data first and just using it as a fallback. Okay, let's go on to max prices. Now, this should be pretty obvious at this stage. Basically here, I'm saying don't go above double the market value. This is to protect against posting an item at an unreasonably high price that will never sell. This can happen when somebody's buying out a market to reset it. You do always get these weirdly high listings that people use. I think that's basically them using the auction house as a kind of extra bank storage. The 1000 gold is a backup for unpriceable items. In reality, if I do see an item hit that, I'm going to stop and actually do some research on that item to figure out what I want to sell it on. And again, I'm just going to set the drop down to post at the maximum if it's exceeded. And finally, the normal price is the default price that TSM use if there are no other auction house listings to try to undercut. Now, this again seems a little bit complicated, but the meat of this rule is this bit. What I basically want to do is to match the market price. Again, falling back to the region-wide average if there's no market price and a fixed fallback value for the rare occasions where there's no data anywhere. Now, the occasions where there's no data anywhere generally only ever happens in day one of an expansion where there's a bunch of leveling greens that nobody's ever seen before popping up in the auction house. And that 1,000 gold is basically set on that basis. If you encounter things hitting that at other times in expansion, you really want to stop there's a possibility you've got a hyper rare item that you might want to price a lot more aggressively. The rest of the function here is because if TSM generates a value that's lower than the minimum price, it will actually throw an error. And this can happen where the market price falls below the vendor price. So I'm using the max function to make sure that the normal price never drops below that 106 vendor price that I set in the minimum price. And that's basically it for an entire group setup. It does take a while to set up, but once you've done it once, you're basically done. You won't really ever need to touch this again. The final group is my consumables group. Now this is for items like trade maps, food, own potions, and stuff like that. Now the auction house for this is region wide, which means they will sell a lot faster, but they're also worth less. For these items, I usually take the approach of just listing at any price I can get, as long as it doesn't undercut vendor prices. And I'll usually just post these items once, and when the posting expires, then I will just vendor it. Now, when I'm farming current content stuff, I do sometimes want to try to repeat list it if it doesn't sell first time. And for that case, I also set up a separate group 
with broadly the same rules but slightly tweaked for repeat listing. Now, I'm not going to go into that one here. I'm just going to focus on the basic consumable rules. So let's run through how this changes the settings. I leave the duration at 40 hours for the main group. But if I was setting up a group for repeat listings, I would set this to 24 instead. The post cap is the max possible, which is 50,000. Basically, I want to sell everything I have in my bags. Again, leave zero behind in the bags. And I'm setting max expires here to zero, which basically tells TSM to ignore this setting. For cheap items, even if they don't sell one time, maybe the next time I get one and try to sell it, it will. If you have an item that you want to keep some in your bags, then what you'll need to do is to basically set up a different group, copy this operation, but then set the minimum in the bag to the amount you want to keep. I, for example, do that with Goblin Gliders, where I have a dedicated group for them and I set this so that I'll keep 20 back in my bags. Now, for commodity items like this, bidding no longer works in the auction house. So setting the bid percent doesn't really do anything. You can just set it to anything. I'm also going to set the undercut to zero for these items. And the reason for that is that in the commodity auction house, it will automatically select the most recent auction at a given price to win the sale. And what this means is that there's no advantage to undercutting. So by setting it to zero, I can avoid depressing any prices any further than they already are. The minimum price is strictly based on the vendor price. The speed at which the auction house goes when it's region wide makes bait pricing impractical for the most part. One difference is that I set the drop down to don't post. If there are clowns posting at sub vendor prices, there's probably going to be enough of them out there doing it that it'll be pointless to even try and sell that item. Max price is the same 200% of market price, but obviously I have a lower fallback to reflect the lower prices of commodities. And normal price is the same market value string, but again, with a lower fallback price. Now, what I basically do with my auction house approach is that I aim to sell everything in my bags that I don't want to keep. Once a day, I check my mailbox for expired items. And when what I will do is I'll do an auction house scan only for the durable items so that I can relist those. But the consumable items, I would just vendor at that point because of the lower prices, any auction house deposits that I lose can really build up. So generally I find that it's not worth flogging a dead horse on them and it's better to just vendor them if they don't sell the first time. Now, when I say I don't sell the first time, I mean it for a specific item when I get it in my bag. If say the following day I go out and farm up some more say cloth of the same type, I will chance my arm and I'll always try and sell those drops at least once before I go on to vendor them. And that's basically it. Now, you'll probably have noticed that I have more groups than just those four. Over time, you will eventually find that you want to vary these basic rules for certain cases. For example, I have a pets group that has exactly the same rules as my gear group, but it has a posting maximum of three at the same time. But in general, the settings I post here do offer a decent starting point for casual TSM users whose main goal is just to clear out their bags every session in a quick and convenient way, but with some basic protections against, you know, bait pricing or underselling. When you decide to go deeper into gold making, you'll probably want to create your own rules for your chosen market. And hopefully you can use what you've learned here as a springboard to achieve just that. At the same time, you can continue to use my basic set for the random stuff that you get that isn't really part of your chosen gold making strategy. TSM have a very extensive set of documentation explaining all the various pricing sources that you can use to get even better control over its setup. I am going to link to that down below and I do recommend that once you get comfortable with basic TSM use, you do spend a bit of time going through them. If you're already an experienced TSM user and would have any beginner tips and tricks to share, do please let us all know down in the comments. And if you found this video useful, you can let me and the YouTube algorithm know by hitting that like icon. And if you want to support my channel, do please hit the subscribe button. Subscribing is by far the best way to support channels like mine. There's going to be lots more useful guides like this coming up real soon. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.